I think you know who killed those doctors. You've got to tell us in order to prevent other deaths. I can't. I can't do that. Look. Blood. They got me. Hey, hey, what do you want? What do you want? Uh. Talk. Oh, come on, move along there. I'm innocent. 
I'm innocent, you hear? I'm old popcorn. Uh, I'm a colonel. You can't do this to me. Help. Police. 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 Come on, start popping. What happened to those carrots? I'm innocent, I tell you. I was What do you guys know about this case? We, we don't know. Nothing. We're strangers, strangers from, from Bermuda. Bermuda. <laughs> Come clean or you'll end up in the soup. You better spell it if you want to save your skin. So you won't talk. Eh? Well, we'll squeeze it out of you. Turn on the juice, boys. That's it, boys. Put on the pressure. You talk. Crack down on a bite. So you're a tough egg, eh? We'll soften you. We'll crack you wide open. Try on the old shell game, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fry, see? You'll fry. Yeah, the yolk's on you, guys. I'm hard-boiled. Hey, come on, boys. If you'll be so kindly, could you tell us exactly what happened to the carriage, could we? We'll make short order of this guy. Sunny side up. Come on, yeah. boys, turn on Sunny the Come on, give it to him. I'm going to repay you for betraying me. I'm going to give that brain of yours a new home in the skull of the Frankenstein monster. The uh, juggler vein is severed, not cut, but torn apart as though by powerful teeth. A werewolf. Last night I killed a man. I didn't know what you were doing. But I did. I wanted to kill. <laughs> I think they're after Dracula.
<laughs> this is classic. Don't worry, don't worry. This if you're new to the show, this happens all the time. And I'm a pro at getting us on the right track. All right, we're in. Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Friday Night Scream Stream. I'm your host, Spakenstein, joined as always by my very good friend, Mr. Evan Sink. Good evening. How are we doing tonight, Evan? Who's asking? Um, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the man behind the curtain. It's the IRS calling. Yeah, no, the IRS is calling. Uh, they want to, they want to know more about your, um, your over your overseas offshore accounts that you've, uh, set up on a, at a little place called, uh, Fog Island. I don't think that that, um, I don't think that registers on maps. I don't know if it's a tax shelter, but I think the IRS is, um, is calling they're, you about that. Evan. They're closing Finally, in on that. They, they, they figured you out. Why doesn't the IRS out. ever just call just to say hello? You know, that maybe if they were just a little more friendly, it wouldn't be it's so... really helped their public image a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they could use the good PR. I mean, that, that's the least of their troubles right now. Hello, it's me, your friendly local IRS agent. Uh yeah, that's isn't that like an oxy not oxymoron? That's that's a double negative. It's not true, not true. Uh, <laughs> this cancels no such thing as a cancels nice side. Out. No, there's no such thing. Um, well, thank you everybody for joining us tonight for uh another wonderful Friday night of public domain horror, and we've got a pretty interesting mystery in store for us tonight. Again, tonight's movie is called Fog Island, and it stars two. Um, lesser known, but still, I would say heavy hitters, uh, in the horror genre from these classic movies, George Zucco and Lionel Atwell. And of course, those names do not sound familiar at all, but <laughs> we've actually seen a couple George Zucco movies on this show now. Uh, this is pro I think this is our third, third, fourth. We've Wait, seen... which other ones have we watched? So we have seen Dead Men Walk, where he played twins. Okay, he played, that, a, he played that, a vampire that's been a and a while. doctor. Yeah, that was that was in season one. Uh, and Fresh was here for that. Fresh could not be with us tonight, but he will be back next week. Um, but yeah, Fresh, uh, that was a season one episode that he joined us for. Uh, Zucco was in The Mad Monster, which we saw in season two. That was a werewolf movie. And... Uh, feel like there was actually something else that we've seen that he's in i could be wrong but those two i know for sure oh well i always forget about voodoo man because we watched <laughs> voodoo man but you will not find voodoo man on youtube or online because i'm pretty sure it's not public domain but it's what they call lost media law well uh, not according to paramount uh they're claiming it uh <laughs> just just our our take now, on it. and that's the thing that's the tough thing about trying to mit verify whether these movies are public domain or not is that you some of it is like it's not that it's public domain but it's lost media whoever the rights holders are aren't you know clamoring over like people who are using the content they've just kind of either died out or given up or some ridiculous set of reasons and so you know and i can't think of any movies off the top of my head because i really try to make sure everything we show here is completely like public domain and everything's on the up and up <laughs> everything's on the up and up we're not we're not taking advantage of any loopholes where we are being afforded all the permissions by um public domain this isn't some fly-by-night operation no, no sir no sir. except we're for in the sense that uh well, we kind sprout of. wings and we, you know, our fangs come out and then, you know, then we're flying by night. But this is all above board. Only on the full moon. Yes. Well, and we're getting we're there. We're just coming up. We're I getting think there. It... I, I wish it would just, just wait a couple more weeks because then it would time up perfectly with Halloween. You get some crazy rituals going on. Um I know. Did you hear about all this hubbub? I don't know if uh, any. I don't know if S Sync or any of our, our uh, other viewers are out there heard about this. But this, you know, second the sequel to Hocus Pocus, there's this uproar about how some p parents are going online saying you shouldn't let your your kids watch it because 
it's about uh like the devil it's exposing your child to the devil and like child sacrifice i don't know i haven't even seen hocus pocus which i know is probably blasphemy to some people i'm sorry yeah wait what um, you haven't seen i haven't seen hocus pocus um but it's becoming it's kind of a thing on twitter and on other spaces online right now that it's this all this drama over hocus pocus and i think they're satanism per se but it's i think they said the same thing about uh sabrina the teenage witch yes yes whenever the netflix version of the show came out certainly oh i'm talking about the original oh was there outcry in the 90s i don't i certainly was too young to remember if there was if they saw that talking cat and they said mm -mm, it's the devil yeah well i mean that freaked me out when i was a kid i mean i guess it's a puppet right but still you're like you just kind of accept it when you're like a kid. You're like, okay, this cat is part of the whole like game, like talking cat. Yeah, sure, not bothered by it. But it like when you you flat, reflect on it, you go watch episodes now. It's it's a little yeah, it's a little weird looking. Yes, I think I would definitely agree with that. And I yes, I've seen the original. I didn't see the Netflix version of the show, uh, but I did see. Do did grow up on the original. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're um. I don't want to say you're better off not watching the mm. the Netflix oh, you version. Oh, checked it out, but, huh? Uh, we, yeah, we, 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 did, we did watch that one. Um, started strong, ended weak. Uh, not always the way it goes, you know. It's, 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 you can get the hook or you're set up easy enough, but then when it comes time for payoffs, it's just not. Yeah, until the budget they, ran out or something, and yeah. just yeesh. yeah, it loses so some shows, especially Netflix shows. They they tend to rush the initial development without actually giving the property time to be fully developed. So it starts off strong, but it usually runs out of steam after a season or two. Or I think that was on for like three or four. Yeah, um, it went for a little while, but, but... they just run out of steam. Um. Yeah, they did bring him in. There was a Riverdale crossover. I didn't. Um, I haven't seen that. Uh, I started watching Riverdale, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't make it past like I think the first season. I know it gets crazy and campy, and I'm sure I would love it, but I don't know. I just fell out of it. I'm just waiting for the edgy uh, Jughead. Well, reboot. yeah, you have you not have you not is seen? He in, is he in Riverdale? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Isn't that, the, isn't that one? Yeah. He's, I don't he's know. in it's, there, right? It's been Jughead, that's a character. I think so. Yeah, see, I think probably knows. She's she's probably privy to all this. I, it's been years since I watched it. Uh, I think like when it first came out, and they put it on Netflix right after that, I watched it. And it's like, oh. It's enough for me. I liked it enough to get into it, but then you're... Yes, Cole Sprouse yeah. is in it. Yes, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not. Not. The both. sweet life of Jughead. He's not splitting the role with his brother or anything. He's not. He's not kicking back in his feet and you know only <laughs> doing half the work. He's doing. He's doing the whole thing here. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've done a lot of shit with that that show. I know it's. I mean, you know, Luke Perry was in it for a little bit, and he died unexpectedly. And that show's been on for a while now. There's been a lot of ups and downs but but this isn't a riverdale show or a, or a sabrina <laughs> show or a, no this is this is i mean i mean i guess it was, you know i know riverdale has kind of explored horror themes before but but we're here for the classic public domain horror um so uh gear up for fog island tonight super excited so what um, year are we looking at tonight 44 Five. 45 we got a nice nice fresh movie right out of the graveyard right out of the end of world war ii graveyard basically so it's always interesting to put that in perspective with some of these movies that you know in the 40s is it pre-world war ii during world war ii or post-world war ii because especially with the universal films you can see where kind of a the war element comes into play uh but 
it's it's kind of weird with all these movies, but this is right at the end. This is 45. So I don't know. We'll see. There might be some foreign intrigue. There usually is, especially with the mystery, which tonight's film is a is more of a mystery than a horror. But because the two stars, Zucko and Atwell, it's you would classify it as horror. And that's and that's not just me talking. That's also what it says in the book, in the po- <laughs> Poverty Row Horrors book. It says it's it has a whole chapter on the movie and it's you know it's, yes it's a mystery but because of who it has in it it's you know it's did you say this is a poverty row flick yes going it back is, to poverty um, row yep walking back to poverty row producers releasing corp they did the mad monster which we watched the other two things was zucko they did and they also did the devil bat which we saw with lugosi and I think that was it. The, there's the other studio was um, it was Monogram, and we I think we've seen maybe one or two from them. We haven't seen too many. Um, so this should be interesting. Uh, you know, we'll get some murder. We'll get some secret passages, some hidden loot. So should be fun. Yeah, get out your compass and sextant. Chart a course. Uh, for yes. Fog Island. Um, chart a course to Fog Island. And um, we're also going to be charting a course. Uh, Evan's going to be charting us a different course to a different island um, in a little segment, which we call. What were you drinking? What were you drinking? Well, that's right. Uh, we're, we're making a little detour from Fog Island. We're going to Frog Island with tonight's drink Ribbit. is the Frog Island iced tea. This is made with uh, gin, rum, vodka, some blue curacao, uh, pineapple juice, lemonade, a little bit of lemon juice, and uh, topped with Sprite. So it was Ooh. a lot of ingredients. We got a lot of flavors going in here. That's what you Evan said before show, and I said, "So you're taking us, you're you're, you're taking us to Flavor Town tonight, huh?" And yeah. Somebody call Guy Fieri. Mm, yes. <laughs> this is, this See if is he can not get us. Guy Fieri approved, but will Evans? Evans still going to take us there. Yeah, so we'll see if we can get a get an audience with the king of Flavor Town. Mm. So we've got it's got to be difficult. Yeah, it's, it's uh, harder than seeing the Wizard of Oz, I imagine. <laughs> nobody <laughs> sees the king of Flavor Town. Not nobody, not know how. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain wearing the flame print mm, shirt. Kind of hard, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've got. Um, uh, a lot of clear liquors, uh, like a like a Long Island iced tea, but we also got uh, some tropical flavors. So it's mm. kind of uh, like a like a blue Hawaiian, a blue Hawaiian. Yeah, somewhere in the middle there. So we're gonna see how this is. Uh, luckily, try. like any good cooking show, I've already made the thing. So pre-made. Here we go. Got a nice cup of blue. Yes, and we talked about this. I think you know again. We were supposed supposed to show Fog Island last week. The remnants of the hurricane moved through. My power went out. Couldn't show it. But last week, we were were trying to remember if we'd done a blue-colored drink. And uh, I I think the last time was season one when we did um, Hypnotic. um, Yeah, yeah. I I had to go... I had to go buy some blue curacao because I didn't have any. Mm, So Well, good thing you were able to stock up uh, because this looks great. Uh, very full beverage here, full of liquor. Uh, so we're we're gonna be Great. taking it easy tonight. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot, if you get, will. Uh, uh, or two, or three, or four. Um, <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, right. we're gonna give this a try. Down Cheers. Down the hatch. Dangerous. Mm. That's what I say. Dangerous because you can barely taste. That's good. The alcohol. It's just sweet. You get the tropical flavors. It's like a nice, like, party juice, kind of. There's no... Yeah, that kind of punch-like. Yeah, the uh, the alcohol is not in any way overpowering. Mm. Yeah, i definitely make that again. That's really good. Good call on this drink tonight, yes. Um, so sh- shout out to the, uh, the the random blog I found this on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I was like trying to trying to see if there were other sources for this, and it, it seems like so there's different variations on this, but it seems like 
it's popular on cruises uh yeah there, there's some uh, mysterious hashtags on this blog post mm. uh including uh hashtag carnival cruise and hashtag carnival triumph so maybe this is a, a cruise ship thing yeah, I think it is some um, affiliated with some kind of cruise thing. I'm really not sure, to be honest with you. But we're going to take this booze cruise all the way to Fog Island. Taking it all the way to Fog Island. Very, very excited to be doing so. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this drink is definitely going to tide us over pretty well. You, you see what I did there? Tied us. <laughs> um, don't you don't you love those accidental puns? He'll, he'll be here all night. Folks. I'll be here all night, folks. Oh yes. Don't just just wait. Um, or don't wait because um, we are we're about to be getting into it. Um, I'm just doing some last minute prepping things. Uh, so pay no attention to the man behind the white screen reflecting on his face, which I know it's reflecting <laughs> white on mine right now. I'm just doing some last minute touches to things. All good. Um, and you know, since S Sync, you're the only one watching right now. Uh, how are our voices sounding tonight? We're, I'm trying some new stuff with the mics. So I don't know if we're echoey tonight. I don't know if we have been sounding pretty good so far, but definitely kind of give me some status updates on that as we go along, because I want to nip this in the bud eventually. We're going to get all these technical things. A tiny, tiny echo. echo. Uh, well, we'll figure, we'll, we'll get that figured out, but uh, hell yeah. Um, all right, well, uh, I think, uh, Evan, anything before we get into tonight's movie ah thinking about a tiny echo that's just it sounds tiny. like a sounds like the title of a like an like an artsy indie film mm, a tiny a tiny echo a tiny the story echo. of um it's the, the the tragic story of the the the, the tiniest uh mermaid living mm -hmm. at the bottom of the ocean mm -hmm. yep and uh it's you could just barely just you barely can, pick just up listen. barely pick her up on the sonar um don't you love that great indie great indie film played at all the festivals huge hit um come to think of it uh you know the little mermaid not usually so little usually kind of normal sized yeah yeah although i guess we don't we don't well we usually see her in in uh relative to the the prince i guess yeah I maybe mean, the print maybe it's maybe he's a little prince too yeah it could be could be i mean if he's if he you know if he's you know oh okay there there it is oh so that's why she's the little mermaid she's not the littlest mermaid now that, that would be about a tiny mermaid a littlest mermaid that would be about a tiny mermaid but um who knows maybe we'll get some mer mermaids uh swimming around fog island tonight i mean it's fog island who knows what kind of i'll go ahead and tell there could you. be anything in there there's we won't get too much going on in or outside around the island because it's a poverty row movie so most of it is indoors uh so you know i think um <laughs> not not to dwell on this but uh i think anyone who can wear clamshells for a bra probably not very big no no um it's a good point uh didn't think about it like that yeah before. i never thought about that hmm. hmm ponder that for a moment yeah get, <laughs> somebody at disney and uh, let's get back to that later mm, mm. yep we'll put a pin in that um we'll, we'll get one of our research assistants on that um in the meantime we're about to get, get on over to fog island uh this is a movie that i didn't discover until recently uh, within the last year or two I really haven't paid too much attention to it when I have put it on so that is going to be kind of a new watch for me as far as watching it all the way beginning to end so I'm excited to get into it tonight again the two actors that star in this film are they're very reliable as far as being sinister spooky guys just by the looks on their faces and the inflections that they're putting on words and so they're fun they they ham it up 
They're, they're these guys are both kind of similar in in a lot of ways, but you can say they're both very hammy uh, too. And so we'll get to see them ham it up tonight. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll break out the bacon. Let's um, get to it. All right. Well, then, uh, without further ado, we're going to get into Fog Island right now. All right. And and unlike a lot of the Poverty Row movies that we've seen tonight, this actually has an original score. Wow. So it's it's not the same thing that we've heard like 20 <laughs> times, thankfully. Um, you know, a little more variation. Based on Angel Island. Yeah, so that was apparently a Broadway play um, from 1937. It only lasted three weeks on stage. But... Um, they it was bought and it's basically just kind of, this is just kind of a rip off of an agatha christie story basically uh, -oh. uh i got you s sync don't you worry uh got it got it ba -ba -bum. that's the most important part you didn't even need to hear all the music i was just talking about <laughs> who needed to hear that we're just having all kinds of audio issues tonight, aren't we? Off to a hazy start. Mm hmm. That fog is coming in thick. Rolling in thick. Last week's trivia question, uh, by the way, if you play, the composer also composed the music for which Universal Horror movie? That was Leo. Werewolf of London. Leo, are you out here? There are actually hints of Werewolf of London in this score, which is a little funny. sad thing about this movie is the the quality copy is just you can't find a good one it's all murky <laughs> it's okay it's just it's the fog that's right that's what it is it's just the fog everywhere <laughs> it's not that it's low res it's just the fog <laughs> i love the way they were trying to make that a big entrance they did like as much of a dolly as they could and, you know he could have used a close-up but And that is George Zucker. suspicious <laughs> in the middle of the night with this key. No. My room was cold and damp. And it was hateful fog so it's been home. <laughs> You, you really, really, My really should have gotten a better guy to do your window installations, because this is just <laughs> unbelievable. She definitely didn't see that. <laughs> Leo, I don't hold you accountable for the position I find myself in. Just that, for the present at least, I too would like to avoid the public. In fact, for a while I'd like not to see anybody. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Gail. You're shit out of luck, you Gail. You're remaining here. Yeah? There are a few people I must see. Some, shall we say, associate. Ooh. You're going to let them come out here? I'm going to invite them see out See the here. face in the window? Surely don't think they'd accept your invitation. They'd be afraid to. I have an idea that their greed will outweigh that fear. Their greed? Yes. It was 
they agreed and made them invest heavily with me because they thought I could make more money for them than anyone else. And when my financial empire crashed, they were the first to try to swindle. If I can intimate to them, they will have a chance of sharing in that supposed loot. They'll respond to my invitation. Who wants loot? Who could resist a good pile of loot? What's that? I'm just knocking on my pipe here. No, I meant that noise outside. Sounded like wrong for tree. Wind nice. must be coming up. I'll go and see. Good cover, good cover. Confidential as my cellmate than as my employer. You were less of a menace behind prison bars than you were in my accountant's cage. I have the same score to settle with that crowd that you have. I could be of help to you. You might. A little game of open. revenge. Go to the small door under this balcony. Revenge by Hasbro. Wait for me there. <laughs> Won't be too long. I said, wait for me there. Isn't that just basically Clue? It's all about murder. <laughs> it's just lurking. Yeah, yeah, get ready for a lot of people lurking behind doors and, 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 and armors and, you know, all that. surrounded yourself with the wrong people. I didn't surround myself with them. Sylvia Jordan did. How could you? Blackmail? Practically. As my secretary, she knew a lot about my private affairs, which gave her a certain amount of influence. Then when I married your mother instead of her, Sylvia became vitriolic. She sold me out to her friends, Richfield, Kavanaugh, a whole double-crossing gang that railroaded me. Wow, a lot of good words there. I wouldn't there. have cared if that stopped with that, but they didn't. The double-crossing the gang that railroaded me. me. responsible for the death of your mother. Leo, what are you saying? Surrounding the murder of your mother was obviously prearranged. Isn't it logical, Gail, that this group, having put me safely away in prison, should come back here to learn from karma the whereabouts of the fortune I was supposed to have sorted away? Failing, they struck her down fatally. And they ransacked the place until they were disturbed by the launch returning with the servants. But if any of them did murder mother, do you think they risk coming back out here? I oh, don't forget they didn't get what they came after. I tell you, they won't accept. Well, let's wait and see. These greedy bastards, you know they can't resist a good opportunity to get it. What? How? I would love to know how much money. <laughs> ah, <laughs> just this one man. Yeah, look at that. The <laughs> Bronson Psychic Research Laboratory. <laughs> okay. Alex, <Richard>. Very official. <laughs> this is Emily. Officially <laughs> official. I was in growth casting a horoscope. Otherwise, I would have known it was you wanting to contact me. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Wait a minute. Telepathy, telephony, I have it all. Let me, Let me tell you. It's from Leo Granger, inviting you to a weekend at Fog Island. Just a minute. 
Furthermore, I can tell you the date. It's for the 16th. <laughs> what? Well, of course my powers of divination haven't diminished. What do you make of it, Emily? Uh. Well, are you consulting me professionally as an astrologist or socially as a friend? Well, I thought as a good friend of old standing. In that case, I'd say Leo wanted something. Advice. As you may recall, he never went into any big ventures without first consulting me. Yes. And you never advised him without first asking John Cavanaugh what to tell him. Cavanaugh was very generous with me when I was doing Leo's transactions. Yes. And your influence paid you well. However, I'm curious to know what you think Leo's up to. Well, I, for one, am going out to Fog Island to find out. And you? I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Nevertheless, Gee. I'll probably see you out there amongst the others. And just uh, who would the others be? Why, our own little crowd, of course. John Cavanaugh, Sylvia Jordan, and... Yes, that's right. This is feeling a little bit like Clue. Yes, yes. I mean, it is what in is that Leo classic Brain murder now? mystery... How do you know this is a Leo Vane. Vane. It's, um, a private secretary for years, and I'd at least be expected to kind of supposed to resemble an <laughs> Agatha oh, Christie mystery. And, and the there was, at this time, the same year, Fox released uh, an Agatha well, Christie uh, adaptation called And Then There, there Were None, which is basically pretty much exactly that. So this PRC rushed this out before Fox could get out the official Agatha Christie thing. They got some cheap Broadway play that didn't last more than three weeks. The man who owned it. But it was the original play this is based on had like 17 characters. The play was way bigger than this. That's PRC. That needn't exclude you in Leo's mind as one of Alex Henchman. How do you know that? Now this guy right here, this is the character Kavanaugh. He's played by a guy named Jerome Cowan. And the only thing that I remember him from is the original Miracle on 34th Street. Which, if you've him. seen that movie, it's about Leo, the uh, department Leo, store Santa Claus, who's really Santa, and they Five have a whole legal trial to figure out whether he's no, really Santa. Man. And this guy plays <laughs> the <laughs> DA, who, uh, the New York DA who is trying okay. Santa. And he's, and he's kind of a douche. Um, so uh, it's just a good way to get cold for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a, a lot of people in this movie are character well, people. Exactly they never really play but, uh, leading but what? Maybe roles. Intrigued. You know, they're always After all, he got away with quite a fortune. If he's going to pay off, I, I want mean, to and this is the That's you know poverty row gave don't, these people I'll the uh, uh, and if few we don't, the opportunities that they had to actually play leads. Right. I mean, how many stars is Poverty Row mm -mm. attracting? Not many. Lugosi. That man will do anything. <laughs> Whoa. Nice, uh, coveralls? What is it? Very fancy, very stylish, uh, work, uh, outfit. Yeah, they don't make, uh, don't make coveralls like that. No, not with, like, patterns and, uh, fine stitching. <laughs> He's, He's on, on some, some devious shit. shit. Don't you love it? Hey, uh, I don't really, I don't really get what's going on, but I like it. <laughs> it's like you know, it's not, you know, it's no good. Whatever it is, can't get it. <laughs> Trap door, secret passageway. A sparsely designed dungeon. <laughs> like very minimal. A little a little bit of like slime on the back wall and a table and a candle. You know, you you can go to a lot of effort to hide this trap door, but it's literally the only thing in the room. <laughs> this table that is really not doing anything to cover up the trap door at all. <laughs> It doesn't even have a rug. Yeah, come on. Hopefully this skull will distract from the huge <laughs> trap door under their feet.
Um, their voices, I'd say, about four or five. I can't tell through the storm. Good. You can tell they're definitely trying to mount a, a yes, bigger sir. production. <laughs> I guess they have. You look out for luggage. Very well, sir. It's definitely not on par with like what Universal is even doing with their B movies, but it's still respectable. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a fair amount of uh, set dressing in this one room that they have. Well, how are you, Leo? Quite fit, John. It's very clue like they're all going to arrive separately. Oh, like, <laughs> serious place. Yes, yeah, strangely enough, it was built by pirates. But you shouldn't have any difficulty okay. in finding your way around, John. Thank you. Ooh, everybody's going to be all catty with each other every time somebody walks in. Nice to see you again, something. Sylvia, after all this time. So Snippy. Well, I love a great passive-aggressive you know, dinner party. Not exactly healthy, though. I wouldn't recommend them to my friends. There's a fire waiting. It's, it's just, just like, like a play. play. They're, They're just, just all waiting. Cycle <laughs> through. <laughs> once one, one character ends, it's another character enters. For you here. What about you, Emily? Me? Don't you know a seer is never any good for herself? So this this character, Emmeline, is played by an actress named Jacqueline DeWitt, and she complained about the fog on the set. That was her number one priority. Because we had to put out all our own clothes, and then we're going to play for painting dry cleaning, and the fog was burning, they were just burning oil. Well, I was going to ask, how are they doing fog back then? She said they burned oil, and it, she said they burned oil to make the fog, and it was awful. I, I bet that set just smelled terrible. <laughs> we could hardly breathe. <laughs> We had to provide our own wardrobes and received no money for cleaning. Oh, that's Actor problems. <laughs> I'm Jeff Kingslake, son of Jefferson Kingslake, whom you sent an invitation. You Apparently you didn't know Dad died. Yeah, this guy seems important. Oh, no, I... I didn't, I'm sorry. The old switch you don't mind, of course, my coming out here to see justice done? Of course not, come in. Thank you. He knows something. Father must have given him some kind of deathbed confession. You know all the others? Deathbed confession. To That's got to be an album title, right? Yeah, That's yeah. something, right? I know everyone, Come including on. your stepdaughter. Band name. Oh, yeah, yeah, deathbed, deathbed confessional. I don't know, something. Hello. Hello. I immediately Hello. walked Hello. over to the Hello. most Hello. beautiful Hello. girl Hello. in the room. Like yeah. I don't think that's necessary. You're not very glad to see me, I Should I be? <laughs> Maybe not. Would it thaw you out any if I were to tell you I'm glad to see you? Thank you. Ooh, past history. I'm sure you're all wondering why I invited you here. <laughs> Let's settle that question. That's right a line I've always me. wanted to use. <laughs> I'm sure you you've all, you're here, all wondering say, why I've asked you here. Retribution is not a word. Can mean what? so many. Oh, did you just take a booger out of his nose? <laughs> can mean reward. The return that was, money you that was I way too you. obvious. Come on, George. It could mean giving you an opportunity of getting even with me. Or with each other. It could mean revenge. Seeking a life for a life. You see, you killed something very dear to me. It might have been friendship. It might have been my ideal. Might have been my wife. Perhaps you never knew it, but I happen to love karma. She was more than just a wife. His wife's name was karma? Is that what I'm understanding? My friend. Whichever one of you killed her will kill again and just as wantonly. So let me warn you, the innocent mind you, to be wary of the murderer whenever he or she. Yep. Finds it necessary to strike again. He's not sexist. And that, my dear friend, concludes the business of the evening. Spice up your dinner party by dead. inviting a murderer. Yep. <laughs> Which one of oh, you I is a murderer? We have another house guest. Duck Lake. You all remember Duck Lake? I'm sure. My accountant, who was sent up with me. Mm -hmm. Duck, our friends are having a little drink. Perhaps you'd care to join them. Uh, I thought you said this was black tie. <laughs> Good evening. Wow, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Completely overdressed. Andrew 
with you, old acquaintance. Oh, by the way, I'm afraid I had to send the launch back to the mainland for some flight repairs. It'll All right, be back so in the morning, that probably. is going to take us to our first break, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I believe so. Uh, yeah, so that is the first act of Fog Island. And uh, so j just in case we, we weren't uh, <laughs> paying attention or following this all. Uh... So basically, this uh, scorned... Um, I don't know. I guess he's some kind of investor is uh, he's gotten out of prison and he's getting his revenge against the um, crooks who put him away. And um, he's tempted them there to find his hidden loot. But he also thinks one of them might have killed his wife. So he's he's kind of calling them out. But he's also he's, he set a trap. So it's we got a little cat and mouse game going on so a foot so the game is a foot so um what do you think so far uh Evan? this, this I mean, is intriguing we got a lot of moving parts set up you know um some already some good kind of setup that will lead to good payoff later i mean we saw him working in the dungeon you know it's not like that's just gonna surprise it's like all right that's a setup What's what's that a setup for? You know, it's good. You know, Clue is a good. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. I would agree. Yes, it's definitely I good. Think. Good parallel. And that Clue didn't have a dungeon. No, no, no. There were secret passages. There were secret passages. No dungeon. A uh, basement. Um, no dungeon. Yeah, I mean, I think I definitely. This is the poverty row version of Clue, without a doubt. And it's just missing Tim Curry. It is. It is just missing Tim Curry. But honestly. I think you could call Lionel Atwell the Tim Curry of his day. I mean, okay. not really. I mean, so Lionel <laughs> Atwell, he's an interesting character. Um, you know, we've only seen a little bit of him so far. He is the one with the thin mustache. He's not. He's not our main. He's not Zucko. Who we've did seen you say a lot he's of. Sir? Is he was he knighted? No, 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 not Sir. No, 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 no. no. Lionel Atwell is not a Sir. He was from uh england i believe and um started as a stage actor um the thing is he is really a uh, he was a horror star in his own right before this movie and um honestly around the same time that karloff and lugosi were becoming big in the 30s Lionel Atwell was pretty much right up there with those two guys. Um, he starred in two really solid horror films from Warner Brothers uh, that were both in color. And, well, they did color and black and white versions. You can still find the color versions today. Uh, but he did a movie called Dr. X, which we will see a trailer for. And he did another movie called Mystery at the Wax Museum. And they those movies are amazing amazing set design um he is a really great i'm not gonna say anything about dr x because i don't want to give anything away if anybody decides to go watch it which i highly <laughs> suggest that you should because it is a fun even to this day it holds up but mystery of the wax museum he's a great villain he is absolutely just uh you know, he's stealing the show. And there's uh, another movie which we'll get to see on this show called The Vampire Bat, which he did around the same time. This is all 1932 and 1933. Um, he did uh, The Vampire Bat where he plays he plays a kindly doctor, but, you know. I'm not I don't want to give that away either, but you can kind of guess. But um but but he carved out his own kind of niche. And he was also in a movie that Paramount did called Murders at the Zoo, where he plays a murderous <laughs> Murders um, at the Zoo? Yeah, Murders at the Zoo, and he is like a sad, sad, sadistic um He's not a big game hunter. He's like a, I don't know what he is, but he is that movie is pre-code and it's kind of wild. Like it starts with um I don't think I'm spoiling anything really. Um but it starts with Lionel Atwell has taken his wife's lover out into the middle of the jungle and 
sewn his mouth shut. And he, Jeez. like, runs up to the camera with, like, this sewing on his mouth. And he's, like, f- trying to scream. And his eyes are wide. And it's, like, it's intense. And there's a, a lot of other murders by animals in the movie that are intense that he, like, sets up. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, so he really, like, carved out this niche. Is like, he was competing with Karloff and Lugosi. And then he kind of backed off throughout the rest of the 30s. The early, early 30s, he was big. But once the code came into play, he didn't really get as many leading roles. And then in Once 19... you couldn't sew people's mouths shut. Yeah, once you couldn't be just sadistically brutal, he kind of, um, his roles kind of shifted. And so in 1939, he was in Son of Frankenstein. And he played um, the police inspector who get who had his arm ripped off by the monster as a child and yeah and that's like his trauma is that like he's like got that so if you've seen young frankenstein and the police inspector has the arm that's like okay it comes from that movie and it comes from lionel atwell's character who has this like fake arm that like it makes this like (laughs) clicking sound and it like goes up and goes down and he's like playing darts and he's he's just the whole movie is a perfect example of how over the top he could be, but he's acting against Basil Rathbone, who is trying to be as over the top as possible. So they're both like trying to out ham each other, and it's amazing. And so after that, Atwell really got known as uh, usually playing kind of jolly supporting roles. And he was in all the universal Frankenstein movies after that, um, except Avin Costello meet Frankenstein because he had passed away by then. Um, but he also had, uh, so he was a staple at universal throughout the forties. He played mad scientists. He played police inspectors, mayors, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, in most of the Frankenstein movies, he played a police inspector. Um, he'd get killed the same way in some of the movies. Like, it's just kind of ridiculous stuff. Um, but his career was rocked by scandals. So we're going to talk about that when we come back for the break. Again, during the break, we'll see a trailer for Dr. X. We're also going to see a trailer for another movie he did for Universal in the 40s called The Mad Doctor of Market Street which I haven't seen. Um, It looks ridiculous. It looks, um, you know, it's your classic mad scientist movie, which he did a couple of. And, um, but when we come back, we'll kind of talk more about the dark side of Lionel Atwell's career. Um, So stick around. Um, When we come back, we'll get into the exciting middle of Fog Island. Agree to lay off for 48 hours. But I give you my word, if you don't succeed, I'll come in here, seal every door, place everybody under technical arrest, take fingerprints, conduct a rigid inspection. I don't care if the whole world knows it. Within six murders committed all in the same circumstances. The evidence points here. Another one. If you only knew the things that have happened. Are you worried about your father? Yes, I am. Oh, the only thing I'm concerned about is your safety. Say, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Nothing at all. Only all last night I lay down with a bunch of stiffs. Look, a lot of goofy guys, let a dame poke a gun in my stomach, and then I take a trick cigar from a dumb policeman. It is my theory that one of us in the past, from dire necessity, was driven to cannibalism. The memory of that act was hammered like a nail into the mind of that man. Shrewd and brilliant. He could conceal his madness from the human eye, even from himself, but he can't conceal it from the eyes of the radio sensitivity. Thank you. 
I've gone as far as I can in my scientific research among the lower animals. But it is obvious that my findings will not be accepted by the medical world until they have first been demonstrated upon a human being. <laughs> dramatically begins the absorbing story of six human souls marooned on a savage island at the mercy of a mad scientist who claimed he could bring the dead back to life and needed victims to prove it. Stop! Well, you can't do a thing like that. I know. Well, I can't, can't I? I'm not going to let that crackpot kill me. Oh, I'm not going to You may bear up live before sun come up or you go in fire. Hey, wait a minute. Are you on the level about giving us this jungle hot foot? What do you mean? I'll take these four. And we are back. So, yeah. Evan and I were just talking. Now we're ridiculous. I, I, so. I wish I was confident enough to say, yeah, I'm going to fight these I'm gonna, four guys. These four probably very strong, able-bodied outdoorsmen. You know? Like, it's not like he's just... I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe they're maybe they're malnourished, but they look... <laughs> they looked like healthy white actors to me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> didn't look very native. Um, but, you know, I haven't seen that one. So who knows how uh, ridiculous that gets. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was basically Lionel Atwell kind of in the 40s got to a point where he was starting to play mad scientists again. But uh, unfortunately, his career was also rocked by scandal at the very same time. So basically what happened was he had a Christmas party in 1940 and all that really can be confirmed is that stag films were shown, which if you don't know what a stag film is, it's basically just like, it's just like porn, you know, like essentially, right? <laughs> So that's the only thing that can, can be confirmed. But there were a lot of rumors that there that there were orgies on his tiger skin rug, apparently. Uh, that um, there was also rumor of rape of an underage party goer. So that was really where things well. took a turn. So a grand jury investigated in 1941. In 1942, he was convicted of perjury for lying in his testimony in 1941. And so in 1943, he confessed, yes, I lied. Like, they don't really, again, nothing was confirmed about what actually happened at that party. But by that point, over those three years, his career was never the same. He had, he was still in 40, 1942, was still getting some fairly prominent roles. Um, he's in this uh, popular comedy uh, from the time called To Be or Not To Be, uh, and he plays like a hammy stage actor. And he has a, uh, he's working with an ensemble, but he's still got a pretty prominent role. And he... You know, he really did for a little bit kind of hold on to these roles. But by 1943, he's basically relegated to the really small roles in the Universal Frankenstein movies, playing a cop for a split, you know. In House of Frankenstein, he's in the first 20 minutes, you know. Like, he plays a cop, and then they move away. They they leave his village, and you don't see him again. You know, it's just very... um very minimal stuff so you know but universal still gave him some work and then so did prc as we see here um you know he was able to get some work in poverty row but he was not ha happy about working in poverty row but he did universal horror movies and he did some serials for them and then he passed away um basically the year after this movie in 1946 uh 
he just, you know, after the scandal, he he was just done. And D- does anything good ever happen on a tiger skin rug? No, no. I think if you're the kind of person that owns a tiger skin rug, you're probably not the most uh, uh, subtle, <laughs> like, ethical. There's so many words I could say you're not if you own a tiger skin rug. So yeah, things, if, if, if you, you're not. If you ever find yourself at a party... Um, where the host has a tiger skin rug, just uh, be on your guard. Yeah, d- don't don't take any strange drinks. Don't if somebody asks you if you want to go watch a movie in a back room, you say no, um, <laughs> because you just don't know what's going on in there. Um, and again, not but not to make fun, because uh, we really don't know what happened. But at the same time, it was it was one of those things that. You know, this was the day of the Hayes Code. Like, we talked about pre-code, and then, you know, the code is, it's called the Hayes Code. And so that was established because actors' personal lives were starting to, like, get in the way of... um you know, what certain people considered were good morals and good values. Like the content They're having the too movies, much fun in California. Yeah, we gotta clamp down. Not on only is the content in the movies bad, but so is the behavior of the stars outside the movies. So the code, when it changed the movies, it also changed the expectations of stars. And that's kind of how studios really just started depending more on fixers and people that would clean up bad situations or if there was a scandal you'd find some way to leverage one scandal with another scandal um it was just all kinds of um machinery at work um to cover up things and make it look like everybody had a squeaky clean image and if you didn't then you were blacklisted and that was what happened to Lionel Atwell. And, you know, but again, Universal was still, still giving him work. And I mean, you know, really he and he and George Zucco, this was the only movie they were really ever in together where they shared scenes. They're both in House of Frankenstein. They don't share any scenes together. Um, but they were both at Universal at the same time, a lot of parallels, but, um, you know, Zucco's career didn't end in disgrace, unfortunately, Atwell's did. So, so who is Hayes? So Hayes, Will Hayes, was the guy that was put in charge of, you know, now we know the MPA. At that time, I can't remember what the acronym was, but it was basically that same, a similar kind of body mm. that approved everything that, was being made like they would read the scripts before the movie was even produced and they would say this isn't going to pass the code this isn't going to pass the code and Hayes was like a reformer in not baseball but he was a reformer in some other organizational thing and then he was brought into Hollywood to reform things and clean, clean up everybody's up. act. Clean up everybody's act. And so that yeah, was... Yeah, I guess I hadn't really thought about it, but uh, when did uh, movie ratings get rolled out? Like you mm. know, PG, you know, R? So those didn't really come until the mid to late 60s. Uh, no, maybe it was the early 60s. It's somewhere in that... 64 to 66 range and uh yeah that was when the mpaa as it was known back then was kind of formally established the rating system and before that it was just you're either approved by the code or you're not but throughout the 50s it got people tested it so much that it got relaxed and it got to the point where people were not abiding by the code. So then they said, okay, well, we'll establish a rating system <laughs> so that people know. <laughs> okay, like, look, if you guys aren't going to play ball. Uh, yeah, essentially it was like, okay, the code is not what things are changing. Hollywood is different. And with independent filmmakers out there and exploitation cinema and all that, it was just uh, – <laughs> 
you know, it was just you weren't going to be able to confine people to this code of conduct and morals and ethics. But um, look, everybody's got a t got a tiger skin rug now. We gotta uh, we gotta change up the game a little bit. I mean, seriously, it, it, it's you know, only sleaze bags have tiger skins rug rugs. I guess if we've learned anything <laughs> from the story of Lionel Atwell, I guess we've learned that, haven't we? Um, no, I don't know. Me, I would like to think he was a good guy, but honestly, there, there are rumors going around that there was rape at your home. You're probably not a great guy. And then, yeah, if you own a tiger skin rug, you're probably not a great guy either. So he's fun in the movies, but can't condone, uh, his behavior in his own home. Um, yeah. I'm sure the tigers didn't appreciate it. No, 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 no. Disrespecting the tigers, if anything. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 the the story of Lionel a little Atwell. Bit of, a little bit of film history, a little bit, a little of, bit of behind the scenes. Yes, yes. Uh, All the crazy uh, shit that went down in Hollywood. Well, it's funny how through certain actors, you you can get kind of a idea, a contextual idea of what guided the industry and what guided professional the professional people's lives back then and it was certainly this like code of conduct and morals and ethics that was really just superficial but you know it held up for a little bit so um but uh we're pushing it here um well look at that we we got some spamming in the youtube first time we've had that hey, hey. our first spam first spam in the youtube gotta love it we'll have to find some way to get rid of that uh <laughs> <laughs> so do you I, see this i, I can't see it oh what, what do we have so we have like so we have some droplets like, like a heart droplets kissy thumbs up Heart face check, heart heart thumbs up, googly eyes, heart okay. heart. So, so, so we have somebody spamming emojis. Is that what we have? Basically, on our uh, YouTube page. Okay. Uh, if you're watching us from Twitch right now, you have no clue what's going on. But uh, and Evan doesn't either. I'm just I'm just spamming to everybody. Uh, but this is new and uh, yeah, 69mega.com. Uh, not to give them a shout out. Uh, <laughs> spamming up our our thing with all that i don't know what that is and if you're not spamming us you're just watching the show then hey great love you i don't know what that is maybe uh, they just communicate maybe, in yeah, maybe that is, yeah, yeah yeah cool if it is cool if you're spamming us we don't do spam here but if that's just showing joy then your joy is reciprocated here uh obviously cheers to you um if not <laughs> fuck you but if so cheers uh all right so we're gonna get back into fog island uh obviously i mean i think that was the setup i think now we're about to get in some um the games are really going to begin i do believe yeah um so uh who is it who did it who murdered um leo's wife karma I was, I was, huh karma was that her name karma yeah who murdered karma we don't know we're about to find out uh all right so uh evan anything before we get back into it oh jeez <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited let's just right. get back into it then here we go i'm sure you'll find every convenience on this island Except, of course, the telephone. Dinner will be at 8.30. Late dinner. There was a fade in black right there, son of a bitch. <laughs> ah, I missed it. Uh, it's all right. So I, I guess it was black tie after all. Yep, that other guy was just ready early. Many years ago, it was the custom of this household, when it was in the hands of pirates, to let a man eat his fail and permit him to know his fate. Not so barbaric, of course. I may have followed these the pirates really built a nice place. Each one yeah, of seriously. A token favor. Or you knew it had no sense to put in the secret passages and everything. Like that. 
You're not supposed to show everybody what you got. Not with this in my hand, I'm not. I think I retire. Mm -hmm. I have been used to very early hours these last few years. Okay, see ya. Great. Damn it, this might have been where I was supposed to take the break. I think I'll it's all right. It's all right. Music, we'll live. That was so much energy, you're right. No, it would have been a great place to break. Probably something favoring the woodwinds. Why the woodwinds, Leo? I don't know, Leo. There's something very plaintive about the music of oboes, flutes, clarinets, and something very enticing. <laughs> Mind if I join you? And if I did? I'd join you anyway. You tried that before. And miss? And this time? And your guest, remember? Mine, the old gravy. We were borderline yikes there for a second. Can't tell what's going on with this floor. Do you think the pirates put this pipe organ in? No, I think it was the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Don't you know? Looks like who would no. put this giant gothic no. organ in a pirate's castle? <laughs> who? <laughs> what? <laughs> who did they loot? Who did they rob? All of which means they have this gothic me. organ, right. pipe organ, just also sitting around. Don't trust me. Right. What foppish ship owner has a gothic organ in their quarters? Phantom of the Fopra. <laughs> uh -huh. That's good. Snooping around, right? No problem. Odd favors, Leo Gibb. Or do you understand yours? And yours, Dr. Lake? I suspect Leo wants to keep track of you. So this guy, Mine's Dr. Dr. Lake, an actor named Ian Key, was, was actually considered by Universal to play Dracula before Lugosi, right and um, obviously didn't get the part. You and, understand, you know, so they did not want to hire Lugosi, but really, they didn't want to hire him. They did not, even though he played Dracula on stage, uh, but they had good sense to hire him. And uh, uh, as a actually, this time Ian Keith was acting in a play a with Lugosi called like No Travel I Returns or No Travel Returns. Two fishes swimming in opposite direction and with Jupiter in the ascendant. I should not like to predict what would happen. Uh, his health, never too sturdy, hasn't been aided by prolonged inactivity. I shouldn't like to hazard an opinion either. You know, Doctor, I think you and I have something in common. No? What's that, may I ask? <laughs> We've both been in Leo's confidence. 
I, from an astral point of view, of being in a spiritual confidence, and uh, you, from a business point from of view, of being in a financial confidence. Oh my god. I'm gonna start saying that all so, the time. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta start working that into the vernacular. We might work more or less together to our mutual advantage. Clever of you to deserve that. God, everybody's just stupid. I would be. Oh. Maybe the loot is in. The... Yeah, maybe the loot. Oh God! Like, Whoa! What's the matter? Find it. <laughs> Yeah, I love how he just gave them all these gifts and was like, night. <laughs> it's kind of a power move. It really is. Like, I'm not going to explain any of this. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Oh, I didn't see. He dropped it in his pocket too fast. Alex knows something. Kingsley, I don't trust him. Suppose you watch out for young Kingsley. I will. I didn't know you played so well. Didn't you? I don't, I don't know, know what their past, past is. I wish I had a better... There was a time I thought I knew pretty much about you. Did you? Remember the long walks in the rain? Horseback rides? Tennis? Here we go. The time you beat me six to three. How romantic. <laughs> Long walks like in the rain. For bread. Chocolate sundae. Opal. <laughs> He's just laying on the bed now. <laughs> I thought not. They were always bringing you hard luck. Like the time we were going to the symphony together and you had on your new high-heeled red slippers. Oh my God. Your heel got caught in the grating. You know, it's a shame I couldn't get those nails to stay in. We went down the aisle together and... You don't know how much trouble I had getting those tickets right in the third row, just to show you off. Uh, oh, I've still healed, by the way, but I don't suppose you have any use for it. Do you? I haven't any use for any heal. No, I thought... Got him! She just... Look, did you, you hear that? She got him. What did she say? I don't have use for any well heal. Ah, uh, wow. Well, well, if you don't well, know, that's heal a bird. is like a term for like... No, you uh, haven't done what Leo asked. I mean, what would you say? Like a guy that is yes, like a cad. And if you don't know what yeah. cad means, then <laughs> uh, cad heel scoundrel. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know heel from like like wrestling. Ah, oh, that if, heel. If you're yes. like a yes, that you, would, if that you're works. either like you know like a like the good guy wrestler or the bad guy. The bad guy wrestler is the heel. She don't want a heel. No. All that. Why not? Well, you find out if you think it's important. <laughs> I don't ask any questions. I don't go down there. <laughs> I'm she's barbarian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she, she's playing the long game. I'm, I'm just going to play this organ until everybody else gets themselves killed. <laughs> then I'll claim the loot. <laughs> Yeah, she just opened it and walked away. I don't well, see anything. I don't look, know anything. Look, I've seen a movie. I know not to go down there. Ooh, Leo, you slide off. He wasn't going to bed at all. He's looking to the future. You lie. You want me to cast horoscopes? Oh, no, nothing so individual. I mean, something you would let us all in, like, uh, you know, a seance. Oh, a seance. Well, if you're all in accord, why don't you gather around the desk? Good. I mean, he's... Do you, 
if you go watch some of his other movies, you can tell his energy is just not. He's much more restrained here than he normally ever would be. Mysterious oh, enough, that's why they put her up. in a turban. It's a <laughs> well, if there's any way to make you look more mysterious, a turban's pretty good. That'll do it. Stop it. That's fine. It's fine. I'm not into this anyway. It's strange, but I can't seem to reach you. You seem to bar the way. No. Bars are in the way. They will skip me for the moment. <laughs> and for yourself, what do you see? Myself? It's very difficult to see for myself. <laughs> but I feel about to be elevated. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is cool. Stop it, stop it! It's freaky. Oh. They didn't do that in Clue. Oh. <laughs> so dumb, I love it. Mind telling me how you did it? It was no trick. Sure. It's just a standing desk. Oh, oh yeah, just pull this little lever here and it raises up. It's, it's like one of those swivel chairs. You just pull that little knob and up, down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lying, you didn't bring <laughs> that up. Grip and electric, you're slacking. Where are you going? I have an idea. What about? Gail's key. Oh. Mm. Is he chewing gum? <laughs> <laughs> it's unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> Seance over already, Emily? Yes, Alec, I'm rather tired tonight. Why don't you turn in? I think I will. I wonder if you'd get me a book, Alec. I'm tired, but not sleepy. Mm. I thought perhaps you okay. might pick out something from Leo's shelf over there. Don't you think you'd better select your own reading material, Emily? You have such a good mind. Oh. Tut tut. <laughs> you say tut tut? Yeah. Isn't that like a... Uh... Would you be looking for any book in particular, it means Alec? something. I don't know. Oh, Emily? Something light, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, th I think, How about this? I think, uh, what is it? like a lot Crime of the script is just a thing people don't say anymore. 
Yep. <laughs> Ideal. Yeah, the script was written by a guy Thank who wrote a couple other so war movies for the same studio, me. PRC. Bluebeard, which I think night? we'll get to watch, which well. stars John Carradine, and uh, The Monster Maker, which we'll also get to, get to watch. We'll get some it's kind of a weird show. Pierre Gen Gendron? Gendron? That's the screen name. Is he outside or is he still in the like tunnel or passage? Hard to tell. What are you doing out here? Outside. I might ask you the same question. It's cold in this fog. The air's warm. Mind telling me we what haven't had a lot of uh, exterior scenes. Yes, and I think I, I mentioned that there wouldn't be very many, which is ironic, the fact the movie's called Fog Island. You would expect that there would be more yeah. going on outdoors around the island, but no, there isn't. Maybe I like him. It was weird to me at first that the actress complained about the fog, because like, I was like, even in the book, they were like, there aren't that many exteriors. Yeah, that's true. I'm like, Hmm. That I mean to find out. Is that all you mean find out? No, but that'll do for a starter. And after that? Gail, have I ever done anything to make you mistrust me? Really crazy so though. The others, didn't just you? Burning Obviously. oil to make the fog. <laughs> Isn't it? Can, can you imagine if a modern movie tried to get away it. with that? No, yeah. I mean they. Why on those old movies, anytime they yourself. were like using Why fog, I mean, like, sometimes they did dry ice, There's but like there are multiple incidents alone. where actors like passed lady. out and Don't nobody like knew that far. they were like. <laughs> like that's one of the stories from The Wolfman that the the lead actress Evelyn Eckers passed out and nobody knew that she was like under all the fog and was there for like 15 minutes or something like that. It turns out that uh, uh, breathing a bunch of vapor and not air is good, is not good for you. No, not when there's very little ventilation, uh, which is uh, why I scrapped our fog bit for tonight, unfortunately. <laughs> we had a little bit of better ventilation in the studio, maybe, but got zero oh, ventilation. I came in to borrow some cleansing cream. <laughs> so no fog tonight. We'll, we'll put it in post. I'm not robbing you, am exactly, I? Exactly, yes. No, yes. I seldom use it. Oh, Interactive. Good, nightly, my dear. Too much bother. Nothing should be too much bother to protect your skin. In this climate, one doesn't need to take the trouble. But if you don't take the trouble to preserve your skin now while it's healthy, protect your you'll skin. regret it. I'll chant that. This lady's talking Already a lot about skin. skin. Oh, okay. God. Mark? Okay, that was a little aggressive. That was very aggressive. What an interesting room. And Mother didn't decorate it. These things were here when Leo bought the place. Leo bought it. I thought Tama bought it for him. But he bought it from the pirates. <laughs> Arr, we got to unload this castle stack, matey! <laughs> Even the butler's getting in. Yes, sir. Just tidying up a bit, sir. Nice, butler, nice. Definitely not lifer, looking for loot. Wait up. Lay it off. What, but you're an escape lifer? I acted a bit phony as a butler when Ranger wasn't around. I made some pretty wise contacts in the big house. Contacts that could find out a lot of things. I wrote a few letters. I had some answers. Came over with the mail. There was a guest. Like mm. Hello, God, so much extortion all over the place. The eel you described with the scar across his left palm. Finley Al Jenks, the lifer who crashed out of here about a month ago. I thought you ought to know because... <laughs> I was 
was not expecting that. Yes, I was just uh, looking for you, Leo. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, seem a bit ill at ease. Doc Lake killed a guy. What more could they have me do? Give him enough rope, eh, Leo? Something like that. They're all wondering what you've got up your sleeve. Including you, Doc. That was like a wild fall, though, right? Like, that was a yeah. wild shot. Like, that was good. Yeah, it looks like it was a pretty good fall. Like, they did that well, yeah. That day when that you was not your wife that. <laughs> The day you really went stir crazy. Have you forgotten what you said to me that day? Under the circumstances, no one could hold me accountable for what I said. Couldn't they? And especially if what you said came to pass. Well, what'd I say, Doc? Plenty. And if it took your last dollar. That's just exactly what it did. What, take your last dollar? Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a fact. However, if you prefer to believe us, do that I have a fortune buried here. I can't prevent you. But you said you were looking for me. What for? I thought you might like to know what your guests are doing. I know pretty well what they're doing. After all, there was nothing I could ever tell Carl. Has he got cameras crazy. rigged up in there? All I saw for her was trouble and worry in her tragic end. You ever saw that? Oh, yes, quite clearly. And in detail. Ladies I night. Her choking her into insensibility. Get it, ladies. <laughs> it is? How do you know? She wasn't choked to death. She was stabbed with a knife. Perhaps you know for certain that she wasn't first strangled into unconsciousness. You're making the whole thing up to give the impression you're clairvoyant. Unless you had something to do with her murder. I had less to do with her murder than you had. Ooh. Why, you fawn, if you dare to watch Saucy. Come in. Some real house housewife shit going on. Perhaps you ladies don't realize that your voice is <laughs> the real housewife's a fog. Thank island. you for stopping us, Alex. And you're keeping this young lady from her rest. I know you took my key, you bitch. I really would like to. <laughs> of course, I merely thought I might. Come along, Alex. It was your idea to leave Gail alone. You gave me a faulty palm reading, you skate. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to take us to our second break. So, I got to say, like, this movie is has surprised me, honestly, so There's far. There's a lot like, going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot, of, lot intrigue, of moving parts A lot this. of drama. Yeah, everybody's got beef with, it, like, everybody. Um, murder. I That guy getting pushed off the cliff was actually, like... I mean, I'll have to go back and watch it again later because I wasn't expecting, like, that elaborate of a kill. Yeah. Like, they don't normally show people dying in Poverty Row movies. It's usually, like, off screen. Right, so, yeah. You do. We, don't, we don't usually get a lot of stunts. In no, these. not, like, an elaborate stunt effect where somebody's, like, falling and they're getting smaller and smaller. Like, that's definitely more... Like, you start to see more of that, like, late 40s. Um, and, like, obviously one that a lot of, like, horror fans remember is in Abbott and Costello. Meet Frankenstein, no spoilers, but as um, some characters are falling over a balcony into the sea, it's kind of a similar shot. But, honestly, I kind of like this shot a little better uh, than that, because in that movie, it's so fake. It's awful. <laughs> Here, I mean, it was obviously fake, but the way that it was, like, straight on and... I don't know, it was not, like, if you've seen Hitchcock's Psycho, um, and you know about this scene where a character kind of goes down a set of stairs, that's kind of what that reminds me of for some reason. Um, it's a similar kind of falling thing, and I don't know, it just came out really well. So, I like that. Uh, I mean, we still, we're only two-thirds of the way through, so. Yeah, th things are getting exciting. Things uh, are ramping up. Things are mounting. We're we're hopefully in store for a good series of payoffs. Hopefully some more murders. Uh, hey, death. We still haven't, uh, still haven't seen the dungeon. How no, that's going to pay off. That so. might be a big payoff. We'll see. We'll see where that comes into play, what Leo's got up his sleeve there. Um. 
Speaking of Leo, again, the other big horror actor is George Zucco. And like I've said, he and Atwill share a lot of similarities in that they were both English stage actors who kind of found stardom a little later in life in films. And the thing is, Atwill found horror stardom in the early 30s. Zucco didn't really get into horror until 1940. But then much like Atwill was playing a lot of mad scientists. And, you know, unlike Atwill, he didn't have scandal in his career. So he continued to play mad scientists and stuff for a long time. And um, he, but he and Atwell did both. Uh, another similarity they had is that they both played um, Sherlock Holmes, mortal en enemy uh, Moriarty in mm -hmm. um, two different Sherlock Holmes movies, but that both starred Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes. Uh so um, at different times, they, you know, they both played the same bad guy and they were both Zucco, I think, more often played bad guys than good guys. Like Atwell was kind of jolly, kind of plump. So he got a lot of good guy roles. But Zucco was really always playing douchebags and bad guys and snooty guys. And every once in a while got like the chance to deviate, but not too often. And so at the break. We're going to see, we're actually going to see three trailers because some of them are kind of short. So we're going to see three Zucco trailers. We're going to see a trailer for uh, one of, oh God, there's three. So I'm having to keep track of them all. I know <laughs> one of them is called Dr. Renault's Secret. I think that's the second one. Another one is, uh, oh God, I can't even remember them all. Oh no. Oh, no, I can't even remember the trailers that he's in. Um I no, I didn't do the Atomic Monster trailer. That's um a movie. It's Atomic Mon or wait, no, maybe no, that's at will. We got some mystery trailers. We got coming some up. mystery trailers basically because I can't remember uh these other ones. Oh, The Mad Monster, which is a movie we watched on okay, the stream. Great. Uh we saw that in season two. We'll see the trailer for that. And then the other one is for I don't know. It's a mystery trailer. It's the first one that's coming up. I can't remember which uh Zucko movie. Oh Mummy's Hand. Mm. So that was the first one that Zucko did. Uh and it's like really the first real horror movie that he did, and he plays um and it's kind of I'm spoiler alert if you haven't seen the mummy's hand he's uh he's a an Egyptologist by day and an evil Egyptian high priest by night so it's uh it's a fun everybody's got a side hustle everybody's got a side hustle and certainly Zucco had a few um you know, he's always playing like a kindly something, but then he's secretly evil doing some crazy stuff. So we're going to see these three George Zucco trailers. We'll talk a little bit more about him uh, when we come back. And uh, after the break, we'll get into the exciting conclusion of... <sighs> Fog Island. Forgot tonight's title. We're gonna get into the exciting conclusion of Fog Island. I thought you were just being dramatic. No, well, yes, I was building up the anticipation. So when we come back, the exciting conclusion of Fog Island. Stick around. Say I think you're a swell person. Hmm? You're very beautiful. 
so beautiful, I'm going to make you immortal. Hey, where's the girl? Well, you'll never see her again. I'll give you a treat to tell me where she is. I'm not kidding. If you were to kill me, you're leaving at large a monster that only I can control. Try to kill Dr. Forbes at the inn last night. No. Don't keep lying to me. For years I worked to change your appearance, make you talk. Yet you endanger all I've done for the sake of your stupid animal jealousy. It was the same criminal who tried to kill you at the inn. But why should anyone want to kill Larry? Where's Noel? You surely don't suspect him. <laughs> deep in a dismal swampland, a scientist, crazed by his lust for revenge, repairs the last detail of a diabolical death plan. A few moments ago, Beto was a man, a harmless, good-natured man. Look at him now. He's no longer human. He's a wolf, snarling, ferocious, lusting for the kill. The beast strikes swiftly, the first of four violent, fiendish murders. Into this crime-ridden situation, a reporter finds the biggest story of his career. What should make a gory enough story for your paper? This is more than just a story to me. He was my friend. Joined by the girl he loves, these two follow the gruesome trail of the mad monster. Every lead proves false. Then, one night, a strange, ominous power draws this girl to a rendezvous with death. So, yeah, so those were all George Zucco trailers. Um, in all of those, he plays a bad guy. And, yeah, I mean, again, mostly bad guys for him. And, you know, his career, I mean, it was kind of like Atwell's in, in, as far as the length as well. I mean, I think he didn't really have too many roles after the late 40s. And, um uh, he's kind of got a funny um funny rumors that surround him not scandalous shit like atwell but um <laughs> did he own a tiger skin rug no not not that i know of now he might have i cannot confirm or deny that george zucco ever owned a tiger skin rug um but one thing i can't confirm is that um he was never uh he never thought he was being haunted by cthulhu um, so to give you a little more backstory, on Wait, that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> say, say that one more time. So, to, okay, so I'll just I'll explain a little more. So, there is this filmmaker and occultist named Kenneth Anger who wrote these Hollywood gossip books, and he and they were called Hollywood Babylon, and he wrote 
He wrote the first one either in like the 60s or the 70s. And then he wrote the second one in the 80s. And it was Hollywood Babylon 2. And Kenneth Anger in the book claimed that George Zucco died in a madhouse uh, and believed that he was being haunted by Cthulhu. And that is false. That is not that. Uh, that that is not real. But that is something that was claimed in a book that was somewhat, you know, not necessarily hugely popular. But it was, you know, the guy who wrote it has some has some followers. So it was kind of um, kind of wild to claim that. And there's absolutely no. I mean, he just, you know. Dying in a madhouse, being haunted by Cthulhu is just the ending of every Lovecraft story. Somebody wrote, there was somebody that wrote a short story. I can't remember when I came upon this and I, I didn't write down anything about it. But somebody wrote a short story about Zucko as if that were real. Like he's in the madhouse and he's like kind of like going through his mad thoughts in his head. And. Of course, he was not mad. He didn't go mad, and he wasn't in an <laughs> asylum, and he never. And there was, I don't. There was never any kind of Lovecraft connection with Zucko. He was never in any. None of his none of his movies ever dealt with Lovecraft themes or subject matter that I know of. So, I don't know why Kenneth Anger made that connection, but. <laughs> It was something that was claimed, and I can just dispel that that is false. He didn't. He, it was never in an asylum, and did not believe. It. He, <laughs> he was, was just writing some uh, some Zucko fan fiction. Basically, basically, um, you know, just lived out his life writing fanfic, and you know, the man knew fan service. I mean, he's certainly giving fan service in tonight's film. He's hamming it up. He's got all the, when they were handing out the, when he was handing out the gifts earlier and everybody's looking at him and he's giving like, you know, but he flicked that booger away. I mean, that was just, I haven't seen, I haven't seen an actor pull that off ever. Have I seen an actor ever pull off a booger mid monologue, like flick off a booger, pull that's a, off flicking that's a, new a booger? One. No, I've never, I haven't seen that. It is new. Um, so you know, he goes in some kind of Hall of Fame for that. Uh, so we'll see if he can top it in the third act. Uh, the, the, the booger flick is a high bar to, um, to, to get over, but we'll That's see. That's a difficult maneuver to pull it off. It really is. Just, I'm doing an important speech. Uh, <laughs> Do you like, think that that was maybe the only take they got of that? It must have been, and I, I, I think... Hey, sometimes you're filming, your nose itches, uh, it happens. It's got to be it, because I think that really was the way with the with these Poverty Row Studios. If you If one take was good enough, if it wasn't just absolutely fucked up, then, yeah, let's use it. I mean, that Our was, budget only allows for one take. So I was listening to a uh, an old podcast episode... Uh, earlier this week and it was this um it's a, it was you know r.i.p gilbert Gottfried, but it was his podcast and he interviewed bella Lug bela lugosi jr and one thing that uh lugosi jr said was that his father was um the kind of actor that in one take could nail it like that was his that it was easy for him. And he had a hard time on Avant Costello meet Frankenstein because other people needed four or five takes. <laughs> and that was it. He liked it. Not his style. Work. He just wanted He's a one and done man. So that's, that's why I think he was honestly very comfortable at home in Poverty Row because if you get it good enough, because <laughs> they can take, only afford to do it once. They can only afford to do it once. And especially in this movie, where I think they're trying to be a little more stylish, they're trying to do a little more. I think you have to move faster. I don't think you have the time to do multiple takes still if you're trying to do other fancy things. So um, yeah, I think I think the booger flick might have been a product of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely something new. That was really great. So um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what else Zucko's got up his sleeve. Um, anything before we get into it, Evan? I don't know. I, I don't know who. Who is it? Who did it? 
who done it? Who done it? Who done, done it? it? We've got so many characters, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I mean, we really, yeah. I mean, obviously, the only person that we've seen with any kind of murderous tendencies is the doctor who pushed the freaking yeah, guy over the balcony. I, I the think scene. he might have broke his Hippocratic oath there. Yeah, it was a little bit, um, you know, maybe he just thought he was better off that way. No quality of life. As, yeah, uh, maybe there's an asterisk there. Uh, mm, do no harm unless there's loot involved. He's he's kind of like a practicing the Kevorkian model. He's he was merciful, <laughs> doctoring something like that. And we all know the most merciful death is being pushed off a cliff Com into the ocean. Compassionate care. That's what they call compassionate care. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come, come on, on that is the best way to get it over with. Push, push me, me off a cliff into the ocean. <laughs> Might as well. Oh, God. All, All right. right. Well, I think on that note, we're going to get into the exciting conclusion of Fog Island right now. where Pink Floyd got inspired to write the song. No, just kidding. You're not smoking? Not at the moment. Uh -huh. it might be poison. Very good cigar. As you should know, Alec, I was all the fun of my comfort to even managed to get a few where you sent me. Mm, you're forgetting that having a raise of your defense, we got you up with five years instead of 25. Five years was long enough for you to accomplish your purpose, Alex. Five years, the receiver for Granger Incorporated gave you ample time to liquidate my enterprises for your own advantage. Mm -hmm. By the time you got through milking your enterprises, there was nothing left to liquidate. So you came over here. I don't like Lionel well, well, Atwell well, using these come. words, milking and liquidating. I'd rather be careful your accusations, Leo. They are not putting you in front of me, Alec. No, <laughs> no, it's no, making me uncomfortable. It's making me very uncomfortable. Take it for what it's worth, Alec. I might have let you off had you been content merely with getting me out of the way for a while. But that you put karma out of the way permanently for that, Alec. Keep away, Leo. You can't escape, Alec. Oh, can't I? Uh, what was you mad at karma? I thought so. I suspected you all along, but I wanted proof. I've got that proof now, Alec. Obviously, that was the way you stuck her down. Was that the murderer the, the other big name actor in this movie? Could it be the, the other guy who was known primarily for the You very stupidly <laughs> used the same technique, the same knife, no doubt. You see now, I think, that you're not as clever as you thought you were. You see now, don't you? That you played right into my hands. He's hamming up his You see now, now Alec. Yeah. You convicted yourself, Alec. <laughs> 
you've sealed your own doom. You've signed your own doom. Well, I was underplaying it. Cool customer. character for Atwell to play play it like that. Play indifferent. I don't see him playing indifferent very often. Usually pompous or gloating or um, you know, jovial. Not indifferent. Is that the same trap door? I think so. skeleton is that? Is it Karma's? No, it could be. Is it a pirate spell? It could be. It could be a pirate. <clears throat> I'm a pirate. I only know the ways of the sea. <laughs> No. I thought not, but I do. 
So it seems to me it might be wise for us, you and I, to pool our resources, shall I say, and split proceeds. Equally? Share and share alike. Don't trust him. As you wish. Yeah, yeah this, this is an extremely thinly veiled threat. This is so ridiculous. Oh, this is so ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> just fucking people snooping on each other. It's very, yeah, just the clueness of it all is just. I love it. Clue before clue. How many endings does does this movie have? <laughs> they actually <laughs> filmed ten. Then uh, they actually lost them all in a in a vault fire. And, uh, <laughs> so they, they only have the one. Yours, my dear Emily. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, would not, not go, go first. first. <laughs> <laughs> She's down. Where's the blood? Shit, <laughs> one, one, one character is is ten yards behind the next character. <laughs> this is just a train of people spying on everybody else. Pretty much. Down in the no, we're not all down in the dungeon yet. Down in the dungeon. What are you doing here, Kingsley? I was just wondering what you were doing. Oh, I don't think it would do you any good to find out. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's coming. Cool. <laughs> Come on. Whoa. What the hell? I don't think we've seen anybody do a handspring. I haven't seen somebody get a chair broken on their back three Stooges style yet. That was great. This is intense. That was a very well choreographed fight scene for Poverty Row. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I'm tickled to death. Yeah, these characters are dropping like flies. They're really thinning out the crowd here. I mean, we're in the we're in the home stretch. We're heading toward home base. We gotta start knocking, knocking people out. How about you, Jeff? How does your head feel? Feels as though somebody had thrown the book at it. It was a chair. The book? Oh, yeah, that phony doctor. I've got to find him. Jeff, take it easy, please. Yeah. After the way he conked me. But he's a dangerous criminal. He, he has a prison record. Yeah, he's got more than that coming to him. And I think I know where to find him. Jeff, don't. Please. For my sake. For your sake? Yes, Jeff. Look. Come Jeff, on. don't defend my honor. Down. But, Gail, you don't seem to understand. I caught him going through the desk. Gail, do you have any idea what he was looking for? Well, I think I know. Mother told me once, it's something about the top center drawer. Something in it or near it that exposes a secret hiding place for valuables. Valuables? Uh-huh. Well, don't you think you ought to take a look and... See if he got away with anything. I wonder if I the key he gave me has anything to do with it. <laughs> Let me try. Mm -hmm. 
Some of these uh, gifts were just red herrings, because like, what what does a book of multiplication tables I have to do with anything? Don't. It must be a red herring, because that has not been answered. Okay. Maybe it'll come up. You're in the dungeon now. Oh, we are. You're in the the empty room with a table with a skull <laughs> on top of a trapdoor. Anybody else hiding in the wings when I come out? And how many is, more ways we gotta split is it? Anybody else left? Yeah, figured out. It's time. Oh shit! Oh, got the treasure. Treasure chest. Fancy treasure chest. Hey, I'll bet the key Leo Granger gave you opens that box. Why'd you have to say his full name? We all know who Leo is. left of my inheritance. When Leo got into his financial difficulties, I gave him everything else I had to try to save him. But it went with the rest, his unfortunate investment. Please don't blame him too much. He tried. But Gail, darling, leave this island as soon as you can. There's no good will ever come to anybody here. Pirate Don't Island, no way. Try to be happy. Your loving mother. <laughs> oh, that was quick. Oh, come on, lady. You can stand up. Jeez. 
Somebody didn't give swimming lessons, obviously. She knew what you put yourself through needlessly, Gail. Needlessly? Yes. Don't think I haven't seen through you. Don't think I don't know why you ran away from us all. It was your wounded ego. Ego? But, Jeff, every place I went, people looked at me accusingly. I knew what they were thinking. They were thinking she's Leo Granger's stepdaughter, and she'll come in for her share of his loot, too. I knew what you were thinking, Gail, but you were wrong. Dead wrong. Why, I'll bet you even thought that was the way I felt about you. Of course. And you thought I came out here with those cheap chiselers to grab off a hunk of loot. Oh, I didn't know what to think, Jeff. I didn't want to, but how could I think otherwise? You came over with them. Oh, really? We gotta start fighting in the tank. <laughs> it's definitely gonna happen. We got a we got a Jack and Rose situation going on. Everybody's trying to hold on to the flirtation device. So apparently, like the the woman with the turban earlier, she said that she requested her character be killed earlier so she wouldn't have to get in the tank with <laughs> and be like in cold water for like what? a day. I, I was just thinking, man, this must have sucked. Yes, to have to, yes, apparently have it really sucked, and so she she it's found her way, weaselled her way out You're of right? it because she's like, no way, I'm getting in that cold tank. Back. Yeah, didn't she say earlier that she, uh, she said, Leave the felt the one. sensation of water or now. drowning or something? No, yep. but Jeff... Don't argue, I'm taking you away from this place at once. Even if I have to kidnap you. You won't have to kidnap me, Jeff. Well, then, well I hope not. I hope not. That would be Four bad. Nights. Well, that's Don't trust Jeff. He's up to no good. Jeff can't be good. Jeff. I found Leo. 
He has no objection to your going. Oh, but don't you think we ought to find out if any of the others want to come with us? I found that out, too. They're not coming with us. <laughs> yeah, they all said no. They, the they, they said they're fine. They said they're in it's over their heads like here, it. and they just That's what you can't, need, can't get, get away. More than anything else. Unless it's me. I'll settle for both, Jeff. I I don't know. The lady. end. I don't question think mark. Jeff is such a good egg. I don't know that. I think he's up to something, lady. Yeah. Um, well, I. Uh, so there's that, never a sequel to this one, was it? No, unfortunately not. Uh, no sequel. Um, there was no Fog Island 2 or Return to Fog Island or whatever you think it would be called. No, fortunately that was it. Um, I mean, it did not seem like Jeff was a great guy, though. It seemed like he was kind of in it for the money, too. Yeah. So, I don't know. Hopefully she wises up, but we'll never know, I guess. Uh, but that was Fog Island. So, I mean, all around, I'd say it's pretty solid. The end, you know, all of these Poverty Row movies, the ends can leave a little something to be desired. But I think he was pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, that was a yeah, a very solid film. I definitely saw it all the way around. Um, you know, I think... Uh, Everybody kind of being dispatched in a water trap is, you know, it's, it's, it was good and devious. It was just like, I don't know that skipping over all their bodies. I don't know if that kind of rankled me. I would have liked to have come on. Just, <laughs> let's just show, know. show me the dead body. I just want to see them. Let's just go ahead. You might as well just go all the way with it. You know, and I also like any kind of horror movie that can end with a good explosion or fire or some kind of, I mean, I guess this was technically a flood, right? Like, yeah. in a way. Like, we, we saw the terror in season one, and that was Corman's way of ending with a flood because he ended with a lot of fires. And he said, okay, I want to do something different. I want to, like, from my Poe movies, I want to end with a flood and um also speaking of today is the um anniversary of Edgar Allan Poe's death day so oh. R.I.P. Poe uh you know too bad we're not watching a Poe movie it's a little more uh little more of a murder mystery definitely in the clue vein I would say there were definitely a lot of moments tonight that I think we were like oh this is reminds me of clue <laughs> Which is never a bad thing. I, you know, we love Clue. Love so. Clue. One of our favorites. So, I think, uh, you know, you think about all the Poverty Row movies we've seen up to now. This definitely had the most going on, I think, honestly. Like, just in the sense of the intrigue and the ins and the outs. and Yeah, for me, this might have been the... You know, this might have been the the top poverty room flick that we've seen. It's definitely it deserves to there. be up there, and that was one thing that the book said too is that this is definitely of a higher quality because the book does not mince words when a movie is bad. So like, <laughs> so they were fairly complimentary of this. The the thing they were like that they wondered was you know if this even had the production values of a bad universal horror movie from the same year, the same period, like, uh, um, she wolf of London, terrible movie, great production values. If it just had the same production values, you know, that, you know, that's kind of the difference, but it's still, you know, you could tell that for poverty row, they were trying. And that's the thing about, like, you know, this was independent 
filmmaking in Hollywood at the time. This is outside the studio system. and um, But this is also 1945. So this is like, you know, this kind of mystery, kind of gothic, you know, tropes that you see in this movie with trap doors and secret passages. And it, that was starting to go out of fashion at this time. And there was a transition away from gothic horror movies into more sci-fi. And because, you know, once you get post- Atomic post-war. bomb, post-war, yeah. and and it changed so, the game a little. Yeah, bit. between that and the space race, it's movies, especially it shifts away more from horror towards science fiction, and and that even what is considered horror at that time is kind of blurred between genres of horror and science fiction, which is going to take us to next week's film. Uh, that we are going to be watching. You know, in uh, last season, we watched a little movie called The Killer Shrews. Um, it was a lot of fun. Which was a lot of fun. And I don't know if, if, if you guys remember, but we uh, talked about a companion movie that was filmed concurrently uh, at, as uh, The Killer Shrews. That's The Giant Gila Monster. <laughs> So, uh, and that's from 1959. So next week we'll be watching the giant Gila monster. It's all the same, uh, filmmakers. I think the actors are different, uh, for the most part, but, um, it's ridiculous. It's, it's a, you know, shrews, giant shrews were still, you know, it's about as, as big as a dog. Right. (laughs) It gets yeah, bigger how big, here. Yeah, how big is a, a regular Gila monster? Probably like the same size as like a lizard or a guana. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, you call it a monster, but it's just a lizard. So this is looking to be a little... I mean, this is giant. This is big. And um, th- this is a little kind of backtracking a little bit, going back to this, uh, what we just watched, Fog Island, but the director of tonight's uh, movie also directed the Americanized version of the original Godzilla. Uh, got, so, you know, Godzilla from 1957, no, 1954. It's a Japanese film. It's another giant lizard. Giant lizard. Atomic radiation. When a company, an American company got the, um, the rights to distribute it in America, they shot, they had a director tonight, the director of tonight's film, Terry Morse. They had him shoot uh, footage that was spliced into the Japanese cut following an American actor, Raymond Burr, who plays a news reporter in Japan who is like reporting on everything that's happening. So like... (laughs) You know, there's bad <laughs> dubbing of the Japanese people, but mostly it's Raymond Burr kind of explaining what's going on because it's otherwise it's all Japanese. And um, it's, uh, you know, the original Godzilla is better. There are two different movies. There's Godzilla from Japan, and then there's, or, you know, they spell it in Japanese as G O J. I R A Gojira Gojira and but in America the title was Godzilla King of the Monsters that was the Americanized movie which same director so giant lizard movie for sure giant monster movie for sure we're talking about 1954-55 for Godzilla so next week's film Giant Gila Monster 59 is actually on the tail end like those movies were already starting to go out of fashion in 1959. I think they had, they either were peaking or had already peaked, and then giant monster movies went out of fashion. People were getting bored of the atomic age. I'm uh, over it. Yeah, we get by the end of the 50s, into the 60s. Okay, Look, we whatever. get it. Nuclear what else bombs, you got? Whatever. Give us something else, and you know. Again, that's where people were into some Edgar Allan Poe adaptations. They were into some, 
I don't know, it's all, you know, the early 60s is just kind of weird. The late 60s is where you start getting getting into, the, like, the more boundary-pushing, like, game-changing horror content, i.e. Night of the Living Dead, public domain horror film, which we will watch eventually. But putting that, keeping that one in the back pocket, <laughs> saving that, um, because it's a gem. It's probably, like, on my scale of 1 to 10 of movies, that's probably the only 10. Um, maybe 9.5. I haven't looked and seen what I rated it, but I feel like I gave it a 10. But we're not getting that good next week. We ain't getting any 10s. Giant Heel Monster is, like, 5.5. <laughs> well, look, we'll take what we get. We take what we get. It's Giant Heel Monster. It's fun. You're going to love it. We had fun. If you love giant shrews, you're going to love a giant Gila monster. Uh, I can I can guarantee you that. So please join us next Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern for that. You can also join us next Wednesday at 9 p.m. for the Scream Stream minisodes. We're still watching The Veil. We are on episode nine, I believe. And next week's episode is... Destination Nightmare. Yes. That's what it's called. Yes. See, How could we forget? How could I forget? No, I really, like, oh, as soon as I started grabbing for it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's how could I forget? Destination Nightmare. Uh, watch Boris Karloff do his thing. He kills it. You can catch past episodes of the show on YouTube as Scream, uh, find us, uh, Scream Stream Show. You can also uh, check out memes, trivia, Next week's episode, uh, the drink for what were you drinking on our Instagram page at Scream Stream Show. Um, random thoughts, again, memes, all kinds of good stuff on our Twitter page at Scream Stream Show. Um, Evan has social, doesn't have social, so you can't find him. Don't off try the to grid. Look. He's completely off the grid. Um, and, uh, you know, you can find me at Spakenstein anywhere. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you as sync. Uh, thank you, Evan, as always. Um, thank you for our mystery spammer. Uh, yeah. Whoever, um, 69 mega.com. Uh, thanks. I guess, I guess, uh, uh, anything before we close out, Evan? Little Mermaid's giant Gila monsters, I guess size is relative. Size is all relative. If we learned anything tonight, we learned that. So, uh, until next week, sweet screams, everybody. To all a good fright.